So here's the posterior panel of the TLSO. And what I'm trying to show everyone that's watching this is that uh, in almost every TLSO that I've ever seen, um, there is a padded waist groove. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but there's always the groove there. And it's there on purpose. Uh, the reason why we put it there is that it can go on top of a person's iliac crest and they know as the patient, okay, so now this is exactly where I put this piece and if I do this next step this way, I know I'm doing my brace right because they have really, you know, little experience with it, especially in the beginning. So we're going to do that right now. If you can see it, there's like a slight padded waist groove right there. Um, if you look close at the brace itself, you can see that there's a little indentation right there as well, okay? You can focus in on this, hopefully you can see it. This is the waist groove that I'm talking about. Sometimes they're more pronounced, sometimes they're not. It partly has to do with the fabricator or uh, the person that you know uh, is fitting the brace, but uh, this is, if you can see it, inside of here, that's where the waist groove is. That's what we mean by the waist groove. If you also look at it from the outside, again, there's a little groove right there. It's not going to be this gigantic uh, thing that jumps out at you, but it's an important part of the brace. So right here on the outside is also where uh, you, you can see that groove. So we're going to put this on Bob here. Just get it close, and we're going to have Bob come on over here like this, okay? All right, so I'm going to find the top of Bob's iliac crest right here, and I know here's my groove, so I have to come up on Bob here a little bit. Can you take it? Just give me an inch or so. There you go. Okay, so the reason why we do this in the door jam is... Um, a couple different reasons. When Bob takes one of these straps, and you'll see it more in a second, you can pull back like this. We'll just do this motion. He can pull back like this. If he's against a wall and he's pulling back, he's going to hit the wall. So that's one of the reasons why we at least promote the door jam uh, for patients. Some other places might tell their patients to do it differently. We can't speak for everybody. Um, but this is the way we show people how to do it. So I'm just going to grab the anterior portion of the brace. Here's the anterior shell. And this will, the way we do this is that it goes on over the top. It goes on over the top of the back piece. And we try to line up the waist grooves when we do that. Okay? So um, we'll just do that quick. I'm going to scoot around you here. Okay, so we'll let's just let me just do this side. This it's meant to feel like it's giving you a hug, so you're gonna feel that now. If it's too much, just let me know. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we tighten this up. Now this is just, this is us approaching the brace in the standing position. Okay, and we're going to make more points as we go. So just keep notice, keep, keep an eye on a couple things. Right now this is where the height is on Bob. Once it's cinched up, this is where the height will be. So Bob, is that in your sternal notch at all? Is that in your neck? Okay, but is it in your neck at all? Do you feel like, okay. So 
It's not in his neck. He is, he's straight. This is that X measurement that I was talking about earlier. And this is just really important for outcomes with patients because, you know, after the brace is on, they begin their activities of daily living and we can, uh, we can either really help them uh, or, or if you don't take a few extra steps, sometimes they'll suffer. So let's just put this on real quick. So we're going to show you now the brace isn't on 100% yet. There's the, you, can, the, you can see there's space involved. So we're going to do the distal strap uh, on the patient's right-hand side. And we just, what I, what I tell patients here at our company to do is actually pull the two pieces of plastic together if they can, or if someone's helping them, it's great. If you can pull the pieces together and then pull the strap at the same time, you kind of, it, it, it helps to cinch it down. It's not necessarily like a shoe where you can just yank on the strap and the whole thing gets to be perfect. So what you'll do is you'll pull back on this and then really tighten down because these braces are all meant for motion control. Uh, if you want a brace to be doing its job, it has to have motion control. So a loose brace uh, does not reach that end. So we're going to do the same thing here. Okay. Actually, Bob, I'm going to have you do this one if you don't mind. And we're going to show everyone how you can pull back on this a little bit better. Okay, so he's, he just pulled back on the strap and you can see that he would have never been able to do that against the wall because he would have bottomed out. So I'm just going to cinch it up a little bit more if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, so right now, if you can just head up. Okay, right now Bob's in a little bit more straight position and it's not in his neck. Okay, we're going to do this same exact process in a minute with him sitting and you can see where the problem happens. So the whole point is we're trying to teach people that apply braces, whether you're, whether you're in a nursing home, a hospital, a doctor's office, and the orthotist's not there. Now you kind of have an understanding of why is that brace in that person's neck. It's really, an, you know, it's, it's a huge problem and I see it maybe the most uh, for my patients, etc., an orthotist will see it the most, but we'll, we can help you apply braces better.